Hi guys, my name is Dee and I love to suffer. <laughs> I swear to God, one day I will get used to looking at the right part of the camera and I will also end up making a schedule, but life has been pretty weird. I just, I don't even have anything I wanna talk about per se. Well, I have something that it's been like on my mind, but not necessarily that video is going to be about one specific topic. It's really just kind of a me video, a catch up with me video. So a lot of just stuff has been happening. <laughs> and boy, I am very exhausted. So I guess the reason that I even thought of making this video was because I finally got to see my family the first time in about a year and some change, maybe two years. The whole reason that I decided to go down for this particular event is because I felt like there's been enough really weird, just negative things happening in my life, whether it be how I see myself, the artwork that I create, just the path that I'm on in life right now. It seems a little chaotic and it's been, um, for lack of a better word, kind of fucky. <laughs> so I don't know if anybody noticed or even gave a shit if there's people who just found me organically on YouTube. I had braces in the last video and now my teeth are butt ass naked and I have to wear retainers, but I opted not to wear them for this video because they're hard to talk in. I have top and bottom. I don't know what the, a proper word is. The, um, my teeth were fucked up top and bottom. I feel like I hit all of my geek milestones way later in my life. I'm 278. I had braces. Now I have retainers and I got sick recently and had to use an inhaler for the first time. That still comes in pretty handy. Um, I had bronchitis. Now I still have a inhaler just in case I get extra wheezy F baby. Anyway, I got, I'm off topic of a no topic video all fucking ready. The reason that I decided to go down to Houston, which is where my family is living. Uh, my sister and my parents live in Houston. My sister, recently just bought a house she owns a fucking tesla now and i think that is so dope i think it's so cool uh to have watched this entire path kind of from afar my sister and i don't have an incredibly close relationship we didn't know how to handle it and my sister's never been very affectionate but i am incredibly soft i'm very affectionate so i struggle with that that's what going to be one of the things i want to speak about in this video as well but it was my sister's husband's birthday it was the thursday before but he had been out of town and he wanted to have a Thanksgiving birthday party with his family and friends. And she very graciously invited me to her gorgeous home. It's stunning. I just, I genuinely can't say how proud I am of her enough. I love her so much and I think she's such an incredible woman. I grew up wanting to be like her so deeply. Uh, my sister is, I'll insert photos of my sister. She is shades lighter than me. I am a dark skinned person. I. I've always been dark skinned. Growing up in a black community and being dark skinned is a bit difficult. It's only now recently started becoming something that's easier for people to embrace and love. But I digress. I wanna say a couple weeks before that, I have a really bad time with time. I don't keep track of it very well. <laughs> My aunt uh, had been on dialysis for years and she had finally decided she was done. She was like, I don't want to do dialysis anymore. Clock me out, <laughs> basically. And you know what? I can't blame her. I would have probably made the same decision. Yeah, you, you can only fight for so long and then you just kind of get wiped out. You get exhausted. And uh, she was ready to call it. And I respect her, uh, her decision. I had to say goodbye to her on the phone. I was actually at work at the time. And it felt weird because I love my aunt. She's a wonderful woman. I have not a single negative memory of her. I have not a single negative interaction that I can think of that I had with her. She'd always been very fun loving. Um, my dad's side of the family has always been a very joyous people. They drink, they indulge in all things. <laughs> and yeah, I, I definitely got a good chunk of my personality from my father and his siblings. I'm a pretty zesty person. <laughs> it affected me pretty 
pretty badly. Everything just felt out of whack. I've not felt myself in a really long time. I've not been able to express myself and uh, I've just, I've genuinely just been feeling really lonely. And uh, it reminds me of when I first started this YouTube channel, I kind of was like, I just, I wanna kind of work through shit and to be able to do it on YouTube and maybe, you know, make some kind of career out of it and just be, I wanna, just be myself authentically and I've always wanted to be myself authentically which is gonna I hopefully I'll remember because I, I didn't take notes or anything I'm just kind of rifting but I've always wanted to be myself authentically and it's always been very hard for me whether it's because of the place that I grew up the people I grew up with just you know having a pretty large personality I'm not really sure uh, what it was or what it is because I still feel it but I think that if I just kind of talk and f you know, have a flow of consciousness kind of thing. I'll be able to identify some of the things that I have problems with uh, internally. But yeah, a whole lot of things have changed. My aunt died. I got into it with my mom. Because of the type of person I am, I like to make sure everybody around me feels good. I hate seeing people that I love sad. I hate seeing strangers sad. I care deeply about people and happiness and growth and acceptance. It's always been something I've preached for a while. She and I have kind of been a bit at odds for a while now because I'm fucking tired of always having to be a fixer. <laughs> I'm tired of having to always be the one who makes myself smaller for the people I love around me. I don't think I've ever felt 100% myself. There's always been a part of me hidden at any given time. And I know that in the type of society that we live in, that's just kind of something that's a default. Everyone hides different parts of themselves, but I don't want to. I specifically don't want to have to do that. I want to live, I want to be, I want to be able to take up space and not feel embarrassed about that. I want to feel my feelings and not apologize for them. And I've been apologizing for existing for a really long time, for being dark, for having G different gender identities for just being, being loud, being talkative, being goofy, being clumsy, uh, being forgetful, having problems with my anger. I've sustained quite a few head injuries. It's affected my balance, my long and short term memory, my personality, uh, the information that I can retain. Growing up, there was times where I would just black out, like I would drop, like it's not like, oh, I lost track of time. I would just be doing one thing and then I'd wake up on the floor because of the the types of head injuries that I've endured. Throughout all of that, I've been a very effervescent kind of person. I've always been pretty bubbly. I've always been able to mold myself to what people need. I don't think that's necessarily because of who I am. I think it was mostly coping mechanism. I shaped myself into different people and personalities and shapes so that I could fit and make as little waves as possible. But despite myself, I can't not be myself. <laughs> and I remember hating myself for a really long time because I'm like, I know that I'm annoying. I know that I get on people's nerves. I know that I'm not the brightest. I know I talk and laugh and joke in inappropriate times. I know that I take up so much space. I know that I'm clumsy. I know that I just suck is, you know, something I've always told myself and I'll, what, I, what I still tell myself. But I've, always, I've known this for a long time. I've taken up space and been annoying for as long as I've been alive. And I've been apologizing for that entire time. <laughs> I would get angry with myself because I don't know how to stop doing those things. And the older that I got, there would be times where I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna be those things. I'm gonna be all of these things and somebody's gonna love me fully and purely. So I'm going to make sense to someone all the time at some point in time. And um, I haven't found that. And because I haven't found that, you get discouraged. You think, man, there's, it's me. There's something wrong with me. And there's not a single person on this planet that will be able to acclimate and change for me. You've changed for everyone else, but who's gonna acclimate and change for you? Who is going to push through despite? Um, but I digress. That's, that's kind of something I wanna get deeper into a little bit later. With that argument that I had with my mother, one thing that I've always tried to implement is growth. 
either the person will want to grow with you and want to change with you and consider you as you consider them or they'll leave. My mom tried to call and again wasn't coping very well. We had just had the snowstorm here, the winter storm, and I had to work the entire time. I was in the snow. I didn't have power. I was freezing my ass off. I had my pets and candles lit and I still had to take care of the the things for my job. I was waking up at odd hours. I was trudging through snow. I was flipping breakers. I was checking leaks. I was moving people around and making sure that they were safe and they were good and that, you know, they their house was livable. And if it wasn't, I had a new, another place to put them. So I worked that entire time. A lot of the things that I do are very thankless and they've always been that way. So as frustrating and as irritated as I get because of that, I'm used to it. So I sit and I feel bad about it and then I... I just kind of keep pushing because I'm like, I can't sit and dwell on this too, too long because I have too many other things that I have to think about and kind of dwell on. So it just was a high stress situation and that I just didn't feel any control in. I like to have control over the things in my life. I like to be able to control things that I can control. And I've never been able to control anything. (laughs) People always would tell me when I would lose my temper or upset and I'd start crying. They'd be like, you're the only person who has control over your feelings. You're the only person who can dictate what hurts you or not. While that's true, um, I think that takes the responsibility off of the person that's hurting you or causing you pain or causing you an inconvenience. And I don't think that that's entirely fair. Like, I'm not that stupid. I understand the sentiment, but I do believe that when someone hurts you, well, they don't get to determine whether or not they've hurt you. You decide, like, that hurt me and I don't like that. You're the person who gets to decide what hurts you. I've always been very soft. I cry a lot. I feel everything very deeply to the point where even when I was a child, it felt like a curse. I would come home from school after being bullied or picked on or having person I had a crush on reject me or me do something embarrassing and I you know sit and dwell on it and everyone feels that that's not a singular experience but it's definitely something that I've felt because of how my brain works I don't know how it worked prior to my head injuries, but because of how my brain works now, I still think about those things. I still think about the embarrassing things I've done and the people I've hurt and the things that I've said. If there's one thing I could say about myself is I've never used my words just to hurt. Um, I think I've always thought about everything I say to the people around me, whether they're loved ones or strangers. I want to make sure my words strike exactly the way I want them to strike because I had a speech impediment as a child. (laughs) I struggled with getting my feelings and thoughts across uh, because I would stutter, I would stumble, I would get really flustered, I'd start crying. When I get into it with someone, I wanna make sure what I'm saying is exactly what I'm trying to get across. As years go by, I get worse and worse at expressing myself. And I think that's because um, I've just given up on trying to live authentically as myself. I don't think it's worth, you know, trying to explain how I feel because no one's listening. I don't even waste time doing that. I write a lot in my iPad and I tried to have like a physical journal, but it's just easier for me to use my iPad because that's where I draw. Getting into it with my mom, I pretty much expressed to her, I was like, I don't think you see me as a person, which is something I feel most people don't see me as because of society and preconceived notions that I have and preconceived notions that others have about me upon seeing me. My upbringing, the people I was raised around, how those people looked, how those people saw me. I have a really big problem with not being respected. I try to be respectful to everyone that I encounter. I also try to remind myself like, I don't know what's happening in this person's day. So I should be considerate of that. That's something I think of all the time. When I encounter people who are rude or crappy to me, I think, I don't know what this person's experiencing. I don't wanna be, I don't wanna add to that because I wouldn't want someone to add to that for me. On top of the storm, being stressed, being tired, having the gentleman that worked for me as maintenance men just not 
do their jobs properly, just slacking, not feeling good about myself, hating the way that I look, not feeling sexy, not, not feeling desired, not feeling heard over and over and over again for years, my whole life. Everything just kind of dropped on top of me at the same time. I was just, I felt very lonely uh, with the pandemic and everything. I haven't gone anywhere. I go to work and I come home. I get shit on, I get spoken to rudely, and then I have to come home and look at a face that I fucking hate. I hate looking at myself. <laughs> so it was just everything stacking on top of each other. So when my mother called me and I didn't answer, I was very earnest. I said, hey, I don't feel very good. I don't feel up for talking. Please text me because I just, I just, I, I can't handle a conversation right now. There's so much happening. And I think because my mom, parents and in general just constantly see you as their children because of how they were raised children were never people they were just there if they weren't an accessory if they weren't a uh, unpaid laborer <laughs> that's if they're not an inconvenience they're they're certainly not a person they're all of those things but they're not a person and they're just a child and that's what they'll always see you as. I really can't blame them for that because I didn't get to watch my parents grow up, but they got to watch me grow up. They got to watch my personality develop. They got to go through hardships and struggles with me. They got to go through all of those things and see me develop into who I am now, which they have no idea of. They, My parents don't know me. They don't know anything about me, um, especially at this juncture of my life. I try to see the side that they're coming from. I try to understand like she's speaking to me because I know that she loves me, but she's also a product of her environment. Um, same with my father. I know my dad loves me, but he's simply a product of his environment. He didn't have the exposure to the things that I've had exposure to and vice versa. I was not exposed to the things that my father and mother were exposed to nor my grandparents, not exactly. Just the same with my parents not seeing me as a person and having this idea of me and this idea of what I should be or what a child should be and what a child should do once they've reached adulthood. I also had the same, I had the opposite end of that. I still had rose colored glasses on for a very long time of my parents. When I was growing up, all of my siblings, we all kind of had the same sentiment. I kept mine as quiet as I could because I was like, my parents work really hard. They've sacrificed so much just to get me to this point. They love me and I owe them everything. That was when I was still pretty optimistic about just life, even though I've had depression and ADHD and all of that shit for my entire life. I've also had a deep empathy for struggle and sacrifice. Again, that's, I'm a product of my environment. I grew up Southern Baptist and, you know, the church tells you, you got to respect your parents and you have to, you know, you honor thy parents, basically. And that's something that stuck with me and still st I struggle with uh, as an individual, as an adult, as a person who does things on my own. And the, the fear that I have that I'm like, oh man, I constantly second guess everything that I do because I was raised that I, to think that I 100% had to rely on my parents and they're the only reason that I'm alive and I should go to them for guidance through everything. I don't trust any of the thoughts or opinions that I have even now that I don't live with them and I haven't lived with them since I was 17. I struggled with my mom calling me and me not wanting to speak to her at that point in time because I had so much on my mind and on me, on my body, physically stressed. Just a perpetual state of burnout. I'm still in burnout right now. After I sent her that message, she called my sister and was like, I don't, if she doesn't want to talk to me, I don't want to talk to her anymore. Um, I just don't understand why she doesn't want to answer when I call her. That really struck a chord with me because I feel like I've been everybody's fucking show pony my whole life. I've been jumping through hoops and prancing about my entire life, just trying to make people happy. And for some reason, and even in my job right now, at that moment, I I was set off immediately because I'm like, I've done everything that I can as a child to impress you, to lick your fucking boots. It was really upsetting. It was incredibly upsetting to hear her say, I don't know why she can't answer when I call. I don't know why she can't answer when I call. Like a dog. <laughs> 
<laughs> and in my head, it, it just clicked. I was like, that's all I've ever been. I've been a means to an end. I've been a burden my entire life. It sucks because it's like, I've felt that my whole life, but if I tried to explain that feeling to them, they'd take it as disrespect. I remember a very distinct moment in my childhood and my childhood was filled with moments like this and me just having the rose colored glasses knocked off of me and me gently shakily putting them back on and being like, that was my, f I got yelled at for things that kids do. I dropped things, I broke things, I had outbursts occasionally, I talked back to teachers occasionally. I graduated top 10% of my class. I had no absences. I was always on time for class. I was a swimmer, I did kickboxing, I skateboarded for a while to my mom's hatred. <laughs> I was a fantastic child, I am willing to say that. I did art, I was the president of my art club, I played tennis. I did everything I should have done as a child. And when it came time for me to graduate, after I graduated top 10%, I went away to the army to pay for my college because I knew that my parents didn't have enough money to pay for my sister and myself. So I made the decision to make that sacrifice. I never wanted to go to college, not a traditional college. I wanted to go to art school. I wanted to create. That was something I always knew. When I would mention that, they would say, you need to choose something that's gonna make you money. You need to have something that's stable. Uh, how are you gonna take care of us when we're older? How are you gonna do that as, a, as an artist, as a painter? And I internalized that. I thought, God, how am I gonna take care of them? I owe them everything. I owe them my life. I, I have to choose something that works. I have to choose something that will by them, my dad's always said, uh, get me a house and a yacht and I'll be happy. And that had always been my goal. Not for me, for them. I wanted to do those things for them. I said, they have done so much for me and I need to be able to get them a house and a yacht. I have to be the child to do that. I don't know why my siblings feel like they don't wanna to talk to them. I don't get that. They, they've done so much, I've seen them sacrifice. When in reality, I was hearing them say things like, how am I supposed to pay for food when all y'all do is eat and sleep? How am I supposed to do, you know, X, Y, Z? Because you're here, because you do this. And I'm a firm believer. I don't think that your children should know about your financial pitfalls. I shouldn't have to be considering, okay, if I, I really love art, I love creating, but if I ask my parents for that, they're gonna have to stop paying something. They're gonna have to pawn something so that they can pay for this thing because that's what they, they love me so much, they're willing to not pay the light bill for a little bit or to pawn their wedding rings so that I can have paint supplies, so that I can go to this field trip. That I don't want them to feel like they have to do that. I well, I know mom said that mortgages do and well, I did ask for this and I should, I should probably just keep that to myself. I already feel bad enough about asking for it. Your kids shouldn't have to do that. None of us has to be here. <laughs> I didn't ask to be here. I didn't ask to be the last of five. I didn't ask to be here. And if I'm keeping it a fucking buck with you, I want a refund. Like, get me the fuck out of here. I felt so bad about just existing. Um, sorry to get back to that thought that I had. I have a really distinct memory. Again, I've always been a really clumsy kid. I've, I've always bumped into things. My balance has always been trash. And that's because of the head injury that, uh, the head injuries, plural, that I've experienced. Um, my balance is trash. I, I could be standing and you could tap me and I would damn near fall over because I, I just have zero equilibrium. We were cooking tacos. Uh, they'd already had the ground beef set to the side. I don't know what I was doing. I really don't know. But the kitchen wasn't very big because you know, we come, I'm, I, well, I come, my family and I come from a poor class. <laughs> my dad is by the oven. My mom is by the sink. The ground beef is sitting on the countertop. And I guess I turned too fast and I knocked the ground beef over. As soon as I hit it, I, I immediately remember thinking, oh no, they, I'm such an idiot. I'm so stupid. And they didn't miss a beat. They both turned and, oh my God, I can't believe you did that. You need to get your ass out of the kitchen. You so fucking trifling. Oh my God, you always doing this shit. I told you to go sit down. There's no reason you should have been in here. And it was both of them like yelling at me. That was 
a lot of my childhood because I was always fucking up. It got to the point to where if my parents were in a different room and they called me, I would audibly say, what did I do now? Just to get myself mentally prepared for being berated. I was always in the way. I always made too much noise. God, uh, my mom would always say, that shiny shit will get you every time. I was easily distracted. My dad would always say, your mouth's gonna get you in trouble. Your mouth's gonna get your ass beat. Uh, he said it so often that I like get triggered when I talk too much. Like I know that I'm talking too much and I'm like, oh God, I'm just, I need to shut the fuck up. I'm talking so much. There'd be times where we would have family events and there'd be some people outside playing dominoes and some of us would be inside um, watching a movie. Anytime my dad would decide to, you know, be in and watching the movie, everyone's talking, everyone's, you know, speaking amongst themselves. But as soon as I would say something, my dad would go, shut the fuck up to me directly. He would say my name and say, shut the fuck up. You always talking. We can't watch shit without you saying anything. Because it happened my whole life, I shrink now. When I am in groups of people, I don't consider myself a person because I'm trying to make myself as small as possible. And um, I remember I went out to the bar with probably about seven of us. I just did it right now. There was eight, including myself. We wanted to get a head count of everybody because we're all kind of social and floaters. And we wanted to make sure, you know, every time we'd go to a different bar, we had everyone. And my friend Lara started counting and I also started counting. And I was like, okay, cool, 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 seven. And <laughs> Laura looked at me and she said, seven, there's eight. And I was like, no, there's, there's seven. And she was like, no, you didn't count yourself. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, there, yeah, there's, there's eight of us, sorry. I've done that my whole life. <laughs> I've done it my entire life. I've always counted myself out going to sleepovers. Also, another thing about me, I am pansexual. I like anyone, like, uh, you know, now that I'm an adult, as long as they're an adult, I like anyone. And I had crushes on girls, I had crushes on guys. I didn't know that it was a thing. I didn't know that um, trans people existed, really. I didn't know that there were, you know, non-binaries and in-betweens. I didn't know that that was a thing. But I always knew myself that I wasn't a girl. Like, I'm a girl, but I'm not a girl. <laughs> I know that sounds kind of weird, but I always knew that. I loved wearing baggy clothes, comfortable clothes. I hated dresses. And I know that's not like the, that's not the criteria, but I'm talking about for me personally, growing up in a household, I cut the grass. I wrestled with my cousins from East Texas. I rode horses. I went hunting. I did anything that I could, anything that would bring me closer to being masculine made me happy. It wasn't until I was older that I realized like, I want to be able to be all of those things, but I kind of try to put my hair up as short as I could because in my parents' home, you couldn't dye your hair, you couldn't cut your hair because your hair wasn't your own. It was your parents. So my, whenever I would want to cut my hair, my mom's like, you're not going to cut your hair as long as that's my head. As long as you're in my house, you don't get to cut your hair. So I would try to get as close as I could to looking as masculine as I could wearing, you know, buttons, button ups and vests and, you know, looser fit pants. I did that as, as, as often as I could, honestly. I had a wallet. I had a, my dad hates that I had a wallet. He was like, that's, that's not feminine. Girls are supposed to have purses and I hated fucking purses. To this day, I hate purses. I make my own wallets and it only carries my license, my cards, my insurance card. And I put it in my bra or I put it, you know, in my boot, whatever is easier for me to do. I try to carry as little shit as I can with me. Even when I would spend the night at people's houses, I always felt so awkward because I was like, I'm not like them. I don't socialize the way they socialize. They're all so pretty and they're so much lighter than me and they're so much cooler than me and they're so much more interesting than I am. And I still feel that way in any group that, I, that I'm in. I feel like an idiot everywhere. I remember whenever they would get ready for bed or if they dress, I would turn away because I was like, oh, like I shouldn't, I shouldn't be looking. I should be a gentleman. I always remembered being like, oh, I'm trying, I want to be a gentleman. I don't want to watch these girls while they change. But I remember having crushes on them and being like, wow, they're so pretty. There was a part 
of me that was like, I want to be them. I want to, I want to be like them. I want socializing to come easier for me. I want it to come more naturally to me. It never has. <laughs> I'm always just a sore thumb. I'm always just sticking out. But once I got to the military, I, I joined when I was 17. I wanted to have more control over myself and I thought this is a chance for me to start over, to, to do things new. And I'd been through quite a few things, um, assaults and abuse, you know, the whole nine yards. I'm not special, none of us are special, we've all experienced it. I internalized a whole lot of it and I struggle with it, even now. I'm a lot more confident and I have a lot more of a grasp on who I am as a person, but I don't, I still don't have the freedom and the outlet to be myself. The whole reason that these thoughts got triggered again was seeing my sister create so much for herself, having all of this beautiful success. I'm envious of it because I, I look back on all the things that I did and I think, oh man, I fucked all of that up. I really bungled all of that. What if I had stayed with this person or what if I hadn't done this thing and why can't I manage to be something bigger and better uh, because I have always felt like I was supposed to why is it that I'm always second why am I never the first choice why is it that I constantly have to remold myself and, ch and change my shape make my energy balance with someone else's? Why is it never them for me? Why Why is it that no one wants to mold themselves for me, to, to try harder work for me? I've felt that for years, my entire life. I've been like, okay, well, what is, what, sh what do you need me to do? And I remember most of my major relationships, I was always begging. <laughs> And that's really embarrassing. I get embarrassed thinking about me begging people to love me, to see me. And I still get embarrassed about it now. I'm, I'm embarrassed right now thinking about, I remember being on my knees, my physical fucking God-given knees, <laughs> begging this guy to choose me. And I thought, I'll do anything. I would be any version of what you want. I'm willing to do it had been with a guy for years, six, seven years. And I remember doing so many things that I just did not want to do. It was because I loved, I loved him and I wanted to be exactly what he needed. I was willing to change my shape to be loved and to make him happy. I did it over and over and over again. And I know now that that's because of me constantly trying to get my parents to love me, to like me. My sister was popular in high school. She is beautiful and she's always been beautiful. I have not. <laughs> I have always been a bit funny looking. To this day, I'm very funny looking. I have a lot of weird shit going on in the face realm. Yeah, I would get nervous because I'm like, I'm really not that attractive. Like, I'm, I'm not. I have, a, I have a pretty good personality. Not really. I'm kind of annoying. And, you know, that's. I, I'm just always thinking about how much space I'm taking up and or what I'm saying. And I'm constantly like, oh, you said that too fast or you gave too much information. You, you've spoiled it. Everything is going to suck because you can't stop talking. I've always felt like I fell short. Um, I have a lot of memories. I'm one of the darkest people in my family and as like mom and dad side. Um, the only person I think that's darker than me is my father's brother, my uncle. He is black, he's dark. And every time you would see me, he would say, hey, Blackie. He would call me Blackie. And I would feel so embarrassed and so ashamed. I would feel so upset because I would remember my mom being like, stay out of the sun, you're getting too dark. My dad, you, you're getting dark, you need, you need to go inside. I remember spending entire summers inside because I thought if I just stay inside, I'll get lighter. Guys will like me, girls will like me, people will like me more if I'm just a little bit lighter. I would have guys jokingly ask me out. I'd have girls make fun of how dark I was. It, it hurt because I was like, I can't, I don't know how, why isn't it working? Like, why can't I change this? Why am I like this? Everything about me is so awful. It just stuck being compared to my sister because she was so much prettier and she had a very even temperament and people thought she was mysterious and I always wanted to be mysterious. 
growing up. I was like, man, if I could just shut the fuck up, I could be mysterious. I've never been mysterious in my entire life. I <laughs> can't manage to keep my fucking mouth shut. I will tell you about every fucking trauma I've ever been to or been through in, upon the first meeting. Like I'll be like, oh yeah, there was one time, uh, got drowned at a, at a public pool. <laughs> And nobody helped me. And then when the girl let me up, she left. Like I, I do things like that to strangers. <laughs> and it's embarrassing. I'm embarrassing. It's embarrassing. And I hate that about myself. I just wish that I could keep something for myself sometimes. Um, on the other end of that, I want to be able to be those things. And for someone to think it's awesome. <laughs> and for someone to compromise for me not change everything about themselves, but to see me and think they deserve more. They deserve everything. And I want to be the person to give that to them because whether I'm in a relationship with you or not, whether you're my friend, I want to do those things for you. I'm like, I want to be the person to fucking fix it, to do it, to give that to the people I care about. My friend Bailey, Bailey warms me. She is such a beautiful spirit. I feel lucky every single day that I that I've known her. Like I'm getting like choked up thinking about it cuz I love Bailey. She um look at my eyes they're getting all shiny cuz I'm thinking about how much I love Bailey. How embarrassing. But anyway, I love you Bailey. I think you're fucking incredible. I've said this to her before though. I love Bailey. But Bailey is so talented. Um, she makes jewelry. She had posted on her Instagram. She needed, it was this really fucking expensive, like uh, metal working instrument. And I looked at the price and that bitch was like $3,000. And I was like, cause I was like, Ooh, I can just buy it for her and have it sent to her. Like my brain was like, I want to buy that for her. When I see, if you mention something to me, I've already bought it. Like in my brain, I'm like, it's purchased. <laughs> And that's how I've been my whole life. And also, this is a good test because I am wearing the Beauty Bakery um, Lollipop Eyeliner. Hold on. Like, it's not coming off. So if you need a, a cry-proof mascara, um, not mascara, eyeliner, bitch, she right here. Because I literally just cried thinking about how much I love Bailey. But Bailey is such a good soul. <laughs> it's rare that you encounter people that are genuinely just good that don't want anything from you, that just want to be and to grow and to be soft. And I think I've only met like maybe four people in my entire 800 year life that were purely good. And Bailey is one of those people. Um, another one that just comes to mind is my friend Ben. Ben is one of the most amazing people I've ever met. Meeting these types of people, it feels wrong to me because as much as I want to provide for the people around me, it does hurt that people don't want to do those things for me. It's something you get used to. You end up thinking like, well, you're never going to find that. You're never going to find someone who wants to work, sacrifice and do those things purely out of love. It'll only ever be because of something that you can give them. My parents, well, not my parents, my mom. When I was in the military, I would send money home just to make things easier because I was like, I have um, lodging. I have a place to stay. I don't like everywhere I go, the military takes me there. So I don't, I don't need this money. I can just send money home. Even once I, you know, got out on my own, I would still be like, hey, check your cash app. I just sent you some money. Please take care of yourself. Go get yourself something nice. And this isn't me bragging. This is just how my brain works. When I think I owe my life to someone, i.e. my parents, I was like, they deserve this money more than I do. And I still have a really hard time buying myself things because I think, man, I just spent this money on myself, but I could have donated it. I could have given this to my parents. I could have done, you know, X, Y, Z. And I still struggle with that. I still think like, I owe so much to them. Like, I'm just being ungrateful. Like, this is just your depression and your, you know, intrusive thoughts fucking you up. The reason that I wanted to make this video is because I think about all of the relationships that I have in my life um, with my sister. I After I got into it with my mom, I wanted to make sure that I had at least one positive familial relationship. I get so envious of the people around me who have good, supportive, kind parents. And this isn't a matter of they don't have their own struggles. Um, everyone has their own struggles, but 
My family dynamic has been very bad for a very long time. I've had my glasses, my rose-colored glasses on for a very long time. With the amount of heartbreak and pitfalls I've experienced, if there's one thing that I can say is I genuinely feel like I was put on this planet to love. I'm good at loving because I'm good at sacrificing. I'm good at compromising, but I don't think I've ever encountered anyone that would compromise to the extent that I'm willing to compromise and sacrifice. And it makes me really sad. I always feel like I'm taking up so much space and I don't feel like I ever belong anywhere. And I know that the reason I don't feel like I belong anywhere is because of me taking up so much space and feeling like such a burden to my parents. I never had a place to be myself, to embrace myself, to understand myself because I was never, I was never able to experience the range of emotions. If I got upset, I had to feel that hurt and upset alone. I spent, I'm going to say most of my childhood crying specifically in the bathroom because if I cried in the bathroom, I could wash my face and I could say, oh, I got soap in my eye. You know, if I came out my, you know, my eyes were red. I always took really hot showers. I still do now. But I would have all of the breakdowns and the the panics, the attacks, all of that in the shower. Because that's where the one place that I could feel safe and in control. Because my body, my personality, my reactions were not my own. I had to react exactly the way my parents wanted me to or I'd get a whooping, or I'd get yelled at, or I'd be berated, or I'd be, you know, called trifling. Uh, you know, it was always something. And because it was always something, the only thing my brain could, could conceptualize was all of these situations are different, but you're the only constant. So it has to be you. You have to be the problem. You're the problem. You're the reason that your parents don't want you to hug them. Uh, my mom, Again, I've always been very affectionate. I'm a huggy person. If I meet you, I hug. I don't like shaking hands. I like hugging people. I like feeling that physical contact. I like when people feel safe and comfortable around me because it's all I've ever wanted, all I've ever searched for. Through every relationship, every person I've slept with, I'm like, I just want for someone to trust me and I want to be able to trust them. I want to be seen. And in order for me to make you feel comfortable enough to see me, I'm going to accept you in every facet of yourself, every you know negative. I'm going to be the one to say, how are we gonna move past this? Do you wanna talk about it? I was like, how? in order to get what I need, I need to be able to give that tenfold. And um, that's how I've done all of my relationships. I'm like, I'm gonna give you everything because if you see me giving you everything, you'll give me everything. And that's just not how it works. At least not that I've ever seen. But I was never able to be angry. Um, anger was just not an option in my home. If I got upset about something, I would be hit or yelled at. So I started being upset in small spaces. I have meltdowns in my closet. I would have meltdowns in the bathroom. I would smile and grin and bear it in all other situations. I'd be like, okay, you know what? You'll get to try again tomorrow. But I don't think I've ever actually had respect of anyone. I don't think any, I don't think I've ever encountered anyone who fully respected me. That's a bit of a trigger for me because I'm like, I, I will be respected. Like there was a point in time where I, I would get angry and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna start fucking making people respect me. I'm gonna start using my personality to intimidate people into respecting me. In situations in which I've been taking care of myself and self-consoling for a really long time, deeply uh, protective of those I love because I'm like, I want them to know they're always safe with me. Looking at the people around me and looking at the way things have developed and changed and how I've coped with those things of me being a bit of a, nah, I got it kind of person, it's fucking exhausting. I am tired of, you know, having to plan alone, to defend myself alone, to fight battles alone. Even now, I'm honestly a sweetheart. As long as you're doing the right thing, I will bend all the fucking rules <laughs> for you. Like, I'm a very nice person. I have no problem saying that. I'm fucking nice. I'm not, like, 
I'm not one of those people that's like, oh, if you have this thing, you're nice. You don't really know. I'm fucking nice. I'm nice. I am a carpet. I am constantly being walked over. And when I'm spoken to, it hurts my fucking feelings. Like I have so many internalized things. Like stop being mean to me. <laughs> I'm just tired of people being mean to me. I'm tired of people like not wanting to be soft towards me. I'm just kind of rambling. Uh, I'm probably going to have a lot of like weird stuff that I have to edit with these because this wasn't a planned long video. It's just basically me talking about my feelings. I, I'm gonna try to end this on a, maybe a positive note. I wanna put out into the universe, like I want goodness. I want people who want to do great things for me. I want someone to see me and see deep value for all of the things that I am. I love art. I like creating. I like making shapes and different things with my body. I like, I like to be, I want to be loud. I want to be bright. I want to be a person that people are just attracted to. I want to embrace whatever chaos I'm putting out. <laughs> and I want it to be worth something. I want to be worth something to someone. And I feel like my entire life I've struggled because I, I remember God so many times of me just laying in bed and sobbing because I'm like, why can't I get anything right? I am honest. I, I want to be honest. I tell people how I feel honestly. I am open. I tell them this isn't just a one way road. I want you to feel comfortable with me. I want to be a home for you. I, I want you to be a home for me. Every time I do that, every time I try to be myself fully, the person will get annoyed with me or become ashamed of me or try to hide me, which makes me want to hide myself. And I hate that. I just want to be. Deleted all, all of my fucking social medias and deactivated a bunch of them because I was like, this person, people hate this. People think poorly of this. People think poorly of me. And I just want someone to think that I'm amazing all the time. I want them to see me and hear me speak about things passionately and not zone out, which happens a lot. I watch people, I watch people actively lose interest in me. And as much as I get hit on, on the internet for the pho the photographs that I, that I take, that I pose in, men don't fucking pay attention to me in real life. People don't, no one thinks I'm interesting. And I think I'm interesting sometimes, but I think at the core of me, no, I'm not. Like I'm pretty fucking boring. <laughs> I work, I draw, I have a whole other life that no one knows shit about. I know all of this sounds pretty disparaging, but I I want to say these thoughts because I hold on to them so much and I see people do great and, you know, move forward in their life and I feel so stuck and I, I feel so disrespected all the time and I feel so worthless all the time. I feel like people are constantly trying to figure out how they can manipulate me and get one, get one over. And all I could think was like, man, that sucks. I feel like I'm constantly losing. Um, but then I tried to reverse that thought and say, you know what? Um, this might just be a good thing for her, but I'm sure there's good things coming for me. I'm sure there's, there's goodness coming for me. And oh, also I'm going to insert it. There's a photo that has been circulating since 2016, which is when I took the photo, when I took this photo, um, that has been stolen and re-edited and re-uploaded and, you know, painted and sold for money. None of which I've seen any dime of. That photo is me and every time it comes up, it drives me crazy. It was a photo that was taken when I was head over heels for this guy. He had a motorcycle, he had an accent. I was truly madly and deeply in infatuation with this man. He was kind to me. You know, of course, like I said, it faded. I had never had someone treat me the way that this person had treated me and I felt fun and alive and sexy and interesting. But that photo was taken while I was seeing this person. When I look at this picture, because it has been stolen and every single time it's been linked back to me, it's like, who is that? And I have to be like, it's me. And then I have to prove that it's me over and over again. The photo infuriates me because I am an artist. Like I actually paint and create digital art outside of my photography. The artwork that I create does not get 
very much attention at all. Like it never has as long as I've posted, as long as I've made it public. That artwork has never gotten any attention and I am a good artist. I have only gotten better. But when I see that photo and the lack of credit that I get because and for that photo, because it'd been stolen, it makes me feel even more invisible I spend my entire life floating through doorways and walls and I feel like a haint. <laughs> I feel like a phantom and I've always felt like a phantom. And for this photo to be probably the most famous photo of me, for there not to be any face or name attached to it and to have to constantly reprove myself. It just echoes all of the things that I've experienced in my life and still experience now in that photograph. And every time I have to prove that it's me, it's a fucking punch. It's a punch. <laughs> I want to end this on a positive note. The whole reason that I'm doing this is so that if there's anyone at all that feels the way that I feel every single day, that feels like a phantom, that feels like an apparition, that feels stepped on or walked over. And I'm not just talking about dark skinned women. I feel like that's a given. We get shit on all the time. Have a fluid gender to, to people who are the youngest, to people who always have to be the fixer, to always have to be the happy one, the, the clown, the fucking jester, the joker and the fool. <laughs> to those people you're not by yourself it, it's alienating it feels horrible but you're not alone even if it's through the screen i understand you i get it i know what it feels like to want to do good and to change and to grow and to feel like everything is against you but every day that you wake up and every day that you attempt to try again no matter the setbacks i'm so proud of you and you're so wonderful and you're fucking allowed to take up space. You're allowed to. And I'm sorry if anyone ever made you feel like you can't. I hate that you know how I feel. I hate that anyone knows this feeling because it's fucking garbage. <laughs> but I care so deeply for people, even people who are fucking awful because I know that you only became awful because of something that probably occurred to you other than those people who are just fucking psychopaths who grew up torturing animals fuck y'all but people who are compulsive liars i'm not but you know i'm a compulsive fucking truth teller i can't stop telling the truth about myself for those people who ended up you know in shitty situations because they just wanted to be accepted and wanted to be seen i see you and I'm sorry, and I love you, and you don't have to be this way. There's one thing you take away from this video is every single fucking day, try your best to grow and be good and to affect the people around you positively. You are allowed to be angry. You're allowed to be upset, but do not stay in it. Do not stew in it. Always be making plans to change, to grow, to be, to bloom. Don't ever let yourself stay hurt and sad and angry because it's worth it's worth it to be good even when it doesn't feel like it it is worth it to be good you are worth it you're worth goodness i just want that for you so badly but before i start crying again um that's the end of the video. There's no intrusive thoughts at the end of this because this entire fucking video was an intrusive thought. Um, <laughs> I love you all so much. And um, this is not a video you have to like, comment or share or subscribe. There's This video is probably only gonna get like 15 views and I don't give a shit. If one person hears this and it helps them and it makes them feel heard, I, I'm sorry that there wasn't more goodness and it was just me complaining about my life and rambling, but I love you all so much. And um, I will be coming up with an idea for a good funny video for you guys, just to balance this out. Um, but that's it. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. Share it if you wanna. <laughs> but that's it, that's all. Bye.